If you're a marketer and you want to study how messages look, go through Twitter, this next company, Intelligence, is really doing some fascinating graph work where you can see uh, how, to, how, how messages spread from your influencers out to your customers. Where does your business come from? What, what's going on on the Twitter network that you should care about? It's going to be a fascinating conversation. Who are you? Uh, my name is Matt Hickson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Intelligence. Uh, I've spent the last eight years before this in IT enterprise security software um, and discovered social a few years ago and has led me down this path. And who are you? I'm Nitin Mainde. I'm the chief scientist and co-founder of Intelligence. And I've been working with networks, specifically social networks, for the last seven years as part of my research. And along the way, we, I met Matt Hickson. And we thought this is an extremely fascinating area and we can deliver unique value that nobody else has and we formed a company. So w w what is it that you guys are doing? Because, uh, and is it just for marketers or is it for a broader group of people than just marketers? I mean, at its very core, what we do is we predict how information moves across the social network. And really what we mean by that is, is we're looking at how people interact and build relationships within a context and how they share and pass information from one person to the next. So, you know, marketers have always wanted to know about how word of mouth spreads and that being valuable. And that's essentially what we're able to predict on the first applications on Twitter. But what we do uh, can apply to any type of social network. So uh, this could have impacts on journalism because, uh, you know, the guy who flew, uh, who landed in the Hudson, I, a friend of mine, took a picture of that plane yeah. and was one of the first tweets and it spread, right? And you could study how that message spread through Twitter to tens of millions of uh, views. Yeah, I mean, I think there's two sides of that, right? One is, is to look at what did happen, which you can see how it spread, but what's more interesting is what will happen. Yeah. Because social networks are so dynamic, people change their interests, that event happened today, it doesn't happen tomorrow, um, our relationships change, and so what we're really looking at is understanding all those variables and being able to predict what will happen tomorrow. Yeah. And, and if you look at what data scientists at Twitter and companies like Jive have done, they have shown us immense data saying a particular event happened, Twitter ramps up, and then immediately it ramps down in the, in the number of tweets going, going happening. Yeah. So what that tells me is that there is a sharp burst of dynamism in the network. But then question is, how do you predict that when, before that happens? Yeah. And how do you position as a company, it becomes very important for you to be able to capitalize on that and make, make yourself a part of that. And because at the end of the day, it's how you generate ROI. Yeah. It's, um, and so the ROI is usually talking about marketers, right? Mm -hmm. Who are, I'm in the marketing department and somebody yeah. at Rackspace wants to know how I'm, you know, monetizing. Yeah, <laughs> or, right. or am I affecting things? Am right. I changing the, the, the perception of Rackspace or whatever? Right. So how do you how do you study that? And what look what's on my screen or my boss's screen? Because it's probably going to be my boss that uses your tool, not well, not me. Yeah. Well, you asked earlier, kind of, is this targeted at marketers? And the reality is, is that today a lot of us have used social networks for years, right? Yeah. Whether it be Facebook or Twitter or whatnot, but. The reality is in the last 24, 36 months, it's become serious business for businesses, right? Yeah. Where, where it's no longer about, hey, we should maybe be there. It's like you have to be there because people's attention is there. And so social networks are gonna to continue to grow, whether it be on a proprietary network or whether it be internal social business, which is starting to ramp up. But the reality is the reason we started with marketers today is they have a persistent pain that they're willing to pay for today. Yeah. And that creates a great environment for a startup to add value. So, if it, you know, Super Bowl Sunday's coming up. Yep. Um, and let's say I'm Frito-Lay and I have a, I'm spending $3 million on a Super Bowl commercial. Right. And I want to also have a social media campaign that pushes a, maybe a contest or a message or something right. along with the ad. How do we start with your system? What should Frito-Lay be doing right now to, to think of, about using uh, intelligence? I think the biggest thing for me, and I think Nitin can talk a lot about this too, is, is that when people run a campaign like that, it's a point in time, it's an event, right? And so this burst is going to happen over Super Bowl Sunday, and then it's going to go away. So all that money that was spent by Frito-Lay or Budweiser, whatever it may be, around this campaign, and they got all these people engaged, the question for them is, how do you continue to keep them engaged so that the next campaign you run on social, they actually pay attention to? 
And so the challenge is moving these people from a one-time event into a long-term community. So for example, take Budweiser. If there's a beer community out there, they don't wanna just have these people engage like, haha, that was a funny commercial. What they wanna do is have them engage on a regular basis so now they have this network they can constantly go back to yeah. and continue to get value out of. And so, and this is what I did intuitively with lists, right? right? Yes, I, I, totally. I have a list of startups on Facebook and I have a list of startup entrepreneurs on both Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus, right? right? Because I wanna study those people and I know those are the people who really, if they all get excited about something, they're gonna spread a message right. to the people I wanna reach, right? Yes. So, well, and that's what people have done for years, yeah. right? They've built their own mental model. If you think about what you do with those lists, you're gathering information on their blogs, on Twitter, on all these sites, and you're going, okay, I think these are the people, given what I've seen in the past, that can help me spread a message. And you're also forming things like, well, I think that you know John likes Joe, right? And, and that if I tell John, it'll get to Joe. I mean, you're playing those games in your head as to how do I get information to the people I want. Well, the reality is that's what everybody's doing today. They're building these mental models. And what we're trying to do is change that and saying, look, we can build a data-driven model that can accurately predict who will tell who around these pieces of contextual subjects to help you more focus your attention, not on 500 people, but on 15 people. Yeah, so, how, so take the Budweiser example. What does Budweiser do? Do they, do they start with a list of 100 influencers that they've identified as high-end beer drinkers who talk about beer a lot? Is that what they do? And then they put that in intelligence? Or, or do we just say, hey, go search for beer, and you bring me that, back the graph that I should care about? Right. right. What do you guys do in this? Uh, so, yeah. so first and foremost thing, what they should do is they should identify the context for what, for, for this particular thing, that why they want to, want to build this community, yeah. right? And for somebody like Budweiser, that context may come from business strategy. Like by having a, a ad on a Super Bowl Sunday, what do they want to achieve? I'm sure they have those, yeah. right? So that set the, sets the context, and that defines the kind of people that they're looking for. Right. Even when you look at the audience, it is like, which part of the audience do you really want to target this particular thing to? Do you want it to be that somebody who's never been drinking Budweiser to come and say, hey, I want to go drink Budweiser? Or is this towards already existing people who drink loyally? Now you're differentiating between the contexts. Yeah. There are two different contexts. So you dig deeper into them and you, we help you set those contexts. And once we set those contexts, we bring, bring out those people. And if you have already an existing list, we can see where do the people in this list fall? Yeah. What particular role do they play in the community? And how do they help Budweiser achieve the business objective? Well, and there's a challenge with lists too, right? Yeah. So the challenge with lists is, is that, you take yourself for example, right? If I had you on a list of technology you know, experts, but the reality is you're a parent, yeah. um, you're into photography, um, you know, you live here in San Francisco, so there's all these different contexts which you operate within. So if you were on a list of all photographers, not every one of your interactions is going to be relevant to me that yeah. I'm trying to get to, right? So we need to be able to filter that out, the different parts of who you are. And the other side of lists is, there's a lot of lists out there, right? Lists of, you know, influencers, lists of this or that or the other thing. Yeah. The reality is nobody understands the relationships between those people. So for years, I've followed what you've done. Yeah. Um, you've been great about when I interact with you, you'll respond. But the reality is, I watch what you're putting out in content, but you don't watch what I'm putting out in content because we don't have a relationship that way, right? I, am I following you? I don't know. I don't yeah. remember that anymore. But I mean, you're yeah. following a ton of people. 30, 38,000 right. people. Right. And there's yeah. certain people that get through your filter because of the context you operate within yeah. and the relationship and trust you have. Well, and worse, worse than that, now I'm using algorithmic filters. Mm -hmm. For instance, Flipboard. Yeah. I have my Twitter, my Facebook, my Instagram, my you know, uh, LinkedIn and <laughs> other things coming in there. And yeah. it's picking. It's going through all of those people, maybe 100,000 or whatever, millions of right. nodes, and it's picking you know, 50 stories to show me every morning in the, in the cover stories. Right. right. And that's how I start the morning. Is yeah. Now I'm sort of a slave to the algorithms, right? Now right. I, when I get to my desk, I still have the 38,000 people streaming down my screen, but that's pretty noisy and, and very hard to look at for a long t period but of time. But there's still people that get through that noise because of who they are, right? right. Uh, or m more increasingly, it's brands because of the mm -hmm. relationship the brand has built. Yeah. You know, right. so TechCrunch right. gets to, to me, you know, uh, even a single programmer or a single writer at TechCrunch might not get through to me. Right. It, it might only be a brand that gets through to me now. Yeah. So it, it, 
this is why marketers start thinking about campaigns, right? And right. start thinking about, oh, we need to get to our message out. We need to spend the $3 million on the Super Bowl commercial or probably more than that, right? Yeah. And then we have to have a way to get our influencers all energized talking about something, you know, a cause or a, right? right? And, and now I need to know who are the 50 people I need to invite to watch the Super Bowl with me, right? Right. right. So yeah. is, is this exactly. what intelligence tells me? Who are the fifty people that I, that I, I should invite to have Super Bowl at a, yeah. at a nice I mean, hotel in San Francisco or something? You know? Yeah, it, you know, it's one of those things where you start to look at well, if you're going to attack a community of a hundred thousand people, right? You can't build that many relationships. So think about when when you started using Twitter and when I started using Twitter, 2007, 2008 timeframe. You could you could build genuine communities around these subjects just out of pure hustle because there was enough. You could work at it enough, right? But the reality is, as these things have exploded in scale, you can't do that anymore. No. I mean, you know, Nike, for example, has 12 million fans on their Facebook page. How are they supposed to engage with 12 million people? Well, yeah. they can't. So the question is, is what are those strategic few relationships that you go deep with? You know, would you rather build 50 deep relationships and still have the business objective of getting your messages spread across all these people? Or would you rather be kind of trying to half-ass get to 10,000 people all the time? So, so keep, keep riffing on the yeah. web. The marketer at was what do they see on the screen? What, 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 yeah, so they what, buy intelligence, what, what do they see on the screen? Yeah, so By the way, how much does it cost Budweiser to buy? Well, I mean, so for every topic, if Budweiser wanted to look at Pilsners, for example, um, it's seven hundred fifty dollars and up based a month, based on the size of the network they find, right? So they pay the seven hundred fifty bucks. Right. What do they see on their screen? Yeah. So once they've built these queries to identify this community, we start bringing Twitter feeds back, right? So we start bringing back everything that matches their query. Now, there's two types of things that they bring back. There's the broadcast, which actually, what's funny about the Super Bowl, it starts moving so fast. People can't interact. They're just kind of putting their own content into the conversation, right? If you watch it on TweetDeck, it's flying by. You can't keep up with what's going on. What they, what they see is, is we're bringing in these tweets, which are broadcast, which are one thing, and we categorize those. What we're really looking for is how people interact about that subject, right? Because that's how people are forming relationships, just like we do in the physical world. So what they're looking at, what they come back with is a, is a network graph, which shows them this is all the people that are building relationships around this subject. And there could be hundreds of networks that form. There could be two people talking. There could be 10,000 people talking in one group, right? And that's the point. So what they come back with is a graph. And, and there's lots of people that do network graphs. And, and so we, we do that network graph, but what we do on top of that is what's interesting to them. What we do on top of that is we allow them to see, we can predict for them that when they speak about beer, how far their message is going to travel, and actually what path it will take. So if I tell Nitten, who does Nitten tell? Yeah. Does he consume that information? Does he just ignore me, right? And everybody's different on different. Absolutely. Like if yeah. I talk about beer, Rocky might retweet me. Right? Right. <laughs> right. But if I talk about Facebook or Google, a thousand people might right. retweet exactly. me. Right? right. So this is where context, which I know you're very interested in right now, comes into really big play, which is the context that around that beer forms the relationships that I have with people, right? And people are gonna to listen to me based on that content and that context. And so what we show them is, you know, for example, all these people in this graph might follow Budweiser, but the reality is only a few of them will listen to what they have to say and actually interact with that content. And so if I tell Nitten and he tells someone else, we're looking for that chain reaction. So we can show you the path that these messages will travel. Not that they did, but we're predicting they will travel in the future based on their content. And, and that gets me hot and bothered because you're, <laughs> you're not just studying what happened like with the airplane crash, right? right? You're actually trying to predict what will happen on Super Bowl Sunday when we have those 50 influencers who talk, who we right. invited right. to have a new brand experience, right? right. So, yeah, exactly. That's where in the core, uh, fundamental differentiation lies for us, right? So we are looking at things like, okay, so who are those linchpins within this given network, right? If I uh, connect with them, they can create that domino effect across the network, right? And then, not just that. So that's just the domino effect of your information being able to propagate. But then we're also looking at the consumption side of the information and going, how does, like for you, Right? If you say something to social about a social network once, I will listen. Right? But if I say something about social network to Matt, Matt may have to hear from four different people. Yeah. Right? Four different people, but he may, ha he may need to hear from me three times before, three times to even start thinking about it. So uh, we also take into consideration those behavioral aspects. So multi-touch, 
uh, and uh, multi multi touch and multi multi times. Yeah. Right. So then then now we are started starting to look at not just how the information will flow, but how will people will consume information. So we are splitting these two phenomena of building relationship into information consumption and how people can propagate, con propagate information, putting them together back and saying, here is how we predict that this will go. Yeah. To, to talk to that part of the network, you have to put more emphasis and you may have to need, you may have to activate here this part of the network and ask them to talk about them too. Yeah. Right now, there's a tweet on my screen every half a second that I'm not seeing. Yeah. Can your network tell the likelihood that, that somebody is going to be seeing the tweet? Because if they're following 200 people, that tweet will be on their screen for 15 well, minutes. Well, that's the point. Or 10 you know, minutes. We, we actually minutes. been talking about this a lot lately. Is is that the platforms are really focused on transactions, yeah. right? They're all focused on measuring this piece of metadata or this transaction. But the thing that's interesting is the social network that forms on top of those technology layers, right? The relationships that you and I build about something. So to accurately be able to predict whether you're gonna consume that tweet, actually, yes, we can. Because your behaviors and how you interact with a person on a subject are being recorded, right? They're being recorded in those transactions, but those transactions just represent the relationship you and I are building. Yeah. So if you always ignore my tweets and you because they're going by your screen so fast, whether you're following me or not, but you have this other list that you've set up, which is my high target relationships, yeah. you're paying attention to those. You're interacting with those. Yeah. And now for I can me, tell for me, who I have you, a tech influencers list of people that are right. really high quality uh, tech influencers. So it's a lot less about the transactions. Yeah. It's a lot more about the relationships that you form with somebody around certain subjects and that's how so yeah we could be able to predict that based on your relationships and, and more and more what we are seeing is that uh, relationships are what drive transactions yep. you cannot expect transactions to happen all by themselves. believe me there's a reason rocky and i have not gotten fired at rackspace <laughs> <laughs> because we see this too that yeah you know yeah. on a saturday night I, a multi-million dollar deal came in through Facebook, right? Yeah. And, and this has happened on Twitter and on, on other things. And this is how business, right? I, I know yeah. I know who uh, works at Ford because they're on social media. Right. And I have a, a relationship with Ford right. but just because of that. Right. right. This drives business. Right. And, and for platforms, what they're recording is transactions. What we are saying is, yes, that's valuable. Now let, we will give you more intelligence about how to get you there. You know what you need to do by understanding the relationships that are uh, forming on this particular platform. Yeah. Like Twitter, great tool. How many number of times you tweet and you get all that kind of information. But what you, you can get a list, but what you don't get from there is top 10 people, how do they relate to each other? Yeah. You know, And that's what is more important and that's where you need to be to get into the stream and that's and what the graph that you built yes, shows? Yes. What's going on in that graph? How did you build that graph? And, and tell me a little bit about the, the algorithm that built that graph. Right, so essentially what we are doing is, uh, as the data comes in, we are looking at interaction, because um, the more, in, and by interaction, I just don't mean did you tweet or retweet, but it's a mutual interaction. And we are measuring based on those mutual interactions. So if you out reply me, uh, if you retweet me, that kind of thing. Right. Right. So we are we are looking for those kind of interactions based and but that particular context, do you interact with each other? And based on those interactions, we are measuring strengths of relationships. Mm -hmm. And then based on the strengths of relationship, we are saying, how does this network form? Like I trust Matt. Right, I'm interacting with Matt. I have a relation. Who else does Matt have relationship with in this particular context? Yeah. Right, and based on that, we are we are drawing out these networks. Now, once we draw out the networks, we are saying that okay. So, what is a how much? What is the strength of my relationship with Matt? If I am to say something that Matt usually finds interesting, based in this context, will Matt pass it on? And if Matt pass it on, based on his strengths of relationship, who is picking it up? And are they likely to pass it on? And if they're, so that's the chain reaction that we are talking about. And where does that reaction end? What are the multiple paths that information will take from here? So if I looked at, can I just stick your account in intelligence? Can I just see what your graph, what your relationships are? So, so far we have not yet got, not yet done it for an individual. Okay. And there is, that is for a reason because none of our business uh, businesses or the customers whom we have interacted with have asked us for that. 
Yeah, they will. Well, and what and, you're and, talking and about though is a why. social yeah. graph, right? You're talking about a social graph. Well, I, I, a <clears throat> context graph. I want to know who you are because if, if and I've talked to Aspen yeah. Snowmass, yes. and I've talked to the wineries yes. about this. They they increasingly know your Twitter account, right. certainly at the front door, because they ask for it. Right. You know? the What's your Twitter account? What's your Instagram account? Are you an Instagram user? Are right. you a Facebook user? Are you a yep. Twitter user? And the they know you should... they know at least then if they're smart, right? They're collecting that data, yeah. and they could easily type you in right there and say, "Oh, you're a photographer. Why don't you come on our photo tour?" Exactly. Right? Right. So funny you should say that. So. So on that aspect, once we identify the networks, like Matt showed you, we are giving you a list of 10 people, right? I mean, yeah. to interact with and say, here are the people that you should build relationships with. But when you go, so what we are implementing right now is, uh, okay, so here is the list of 10, within this network, within this context, you know that this person talks to these many people and how, how this is how his information flows. Yeah. But now we are taking it a step ahead and saying, so this is the profile of a person within a context. Now let's see what are all the contexts that he interacts in, yeah. right? So we are developing a, a profile, not just based on this one particular context, but other contexts. Like he keeps saying that you are a father, you are a photographer, you are a technologist, you are, yeah. you may be interested in cycling, and we want to understand all those and provide that information. And I know they're doing it at some level. Mm -hmm. It's just not an aggregate. Yeah. You know, I, I go to a winery and I, I'm hanging out with an executive, and at the next table is a, a famous actor. Right. And he has the president of the winery with him. Right. 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 Yeah. They they know a little bit about these influence networks, but they don't have the tools like you do. Well, yeah. but let's talk about the objective of a business for a minute, because I think that's important. Yeah. Because when we start talking about cross platforms, for example, whether it be Twitter, LinkedIn, Google Plus, Facebook, right? A lot of people are looking for that rock star in the industry that they think no matter what platform, they're going to be great, right? And you have a presence across a lot of platforms. You have a presence in the physical world. So you're one of those people that kind of transcends in technology across different platforms. But from a business perspective, you know, you take Rackspace, for example, if they want to reach the cloud community, right? Yeah. Their whole point would be, well, if I define the cloud community, my objective as a business is to get my message to spread across that community. And so what I want to know is each one of us has a different set of people we listen to and different set of people we pass on to, like we keep talking about. Yeah. But the reality is, is that you need to build the most strategic network you can to reach that group. Yeah. So from a winery's perspective, what you need to be able to do is form a strategy on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever it is to maximize your presence on that. It's just like maximizing your presence on the web with search and SEO, right? It's the same type of thing. But now when you move from strategy, so tactics, which is what you're talking about, the person when you check in, right? So now if you start to integrate that data with things like CRMs or with ERPs or whatever it may be, yeah. now I know that, hey, you're somebody that I should care about because we need to continue to build a relationship with you. Yeah. And now I can also see, like Nitin was saying, here's all the other things you talk about on Twitter because when we approach people, they have a business objective for our purposes, but the yeah. reality is these people are whole people and we need to understand everything about them in order to build an effective relationship. This is what you know, great biz dev and salespeople have done for years and years and years in the physical world. Now we just have tons of data yeah. to allow us to be better at that. I, and where I was going with the, how is the algorithm built, could this be in real time? Could it, you know, as, as I'm meeting customers coming in my front door and I ask, hey, what's your Twitter account? Could, could I see this? chart in real time and understand so, it and, and you know. So uh, that is my dream. One day <laughs> it will be fulfilled. Yeah. But let me tell you the complexities behind that. You know, okay. so when we when I started this off doing this, you know, the c compute instances are so heavy yeah. that to do a 1,500 node network, it took us like a week. A week of processing to get that intelligence, to do can bring that predictive element, understand that. So we worked upon it, you know, that we worked on refining it and uh, doing this multi-threaded and multi-parallel programming and all kind of stuff. And today we can do around like 10 to 15,000 node network in under 10 minutes, mm -hmm. right? But the, the data that it has to gather to be able to do that. Now, would I love to do this at a real time line? Yes, but the amount of compute, I don't think the technology is still there where we can do that. Very cool. Well, 
we have something to look forward to. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Tell me about your company a little bit. How, how was it funded and how many people do you have working for? Uh, so Nint and I started Intelligence in June of 2011. Okay. Uh, we raised a small seed round uh, early in 2012. Hired a team of, now we have six people full time. Uh, we launched a demo this last fall and have been running ever since and we're actually in the process of starting conversations about our Series A. So. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Where do we learn more about it? Uh, www.telligence.com. And it's spelled weird, right? No, it's, it is weird. <laughs> it's T-E-L-L-A-G-E-N-C-E.com. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks Robert. Thanks Appreciate the time. Thanks Robert. Thank you.